I've dreamed of owning a Buick Grand National ever since I was a little kid, but in all of these dreams, never is the car just sitting in the garage. I bought my Buick to drive. I wanna rack up a ton of miles on this car, but there's one little issue. My Grand National is borderline unsafe. It's 36 years old and much of its steering and suspension is original or really worn out. So much play. The car has 142,000 miles and it's a miracle that some of these parts have lasted this long. To increase horsepower by adding more fuel, increase the airflow and increase boost pressure fed into this 3.8 liter V6. And the car runs well. I mean, it runs well really well. And so now it's time to complete the package and make sure this 80s icon can handle well and put the power to the ground for many more miles in years to come. All right, we're kicking this party off in the rear. And let's remove the wheels. I will be replacing these wheels. But don't worry, I'm gonna keep the exact same style. They're just gonna be newer and lighter. All right, wow, these things are heavy. And these tires, I believe they're 20 years old. 2004, 19 year old tires. And they're not dry rotted that bad though. Like they look decent. They're just a little hard. Yeah, don't worry, we'll give these a proper send off at some point, I'm keeping these wheels. All right. All right, so we're gonna basically disassemble everything first. The parts are on their way. Normally I don't do that, but I just, I just can't wait. Um, but we have to remove these nasty old shocks. We're gonna be replacing all the shocks. And in this case, I don't even need to take the nut off. Both of them are missing the nut. So yeah, that's all we need to do on the bottom. Yeah, this is so crazy. That's it. So we were getting some clunking noises in the rear and it's possible that's what that was. Although the shocks, they're really not that bad though. Being a full frame vehicle, we don't even need to get in the trunk to remove these shocks. All right, there's one. Oh, wait a minute. We got lines. We got air lines. That's right. You can tell this is a really old school build when it has these airbags in the rear springs. I actually had them on my Trans Am for a long time. I don't remember if they're still on there or not. Um, but they are for drag racing. You typically don't really put too much air in the left-hand side. You put it all in the right-hand side because when you launch and the engine torques, it kind of does one of these. So you want to have it a little bit stiffer on the back right so it leaves straight. So that's kind of the idea, but I don't know. I might get rid of them because I'm not really going to be doing too much serious drag racing. And with modern technology shocks, you kind of don't need them. There we go. All right guys, this is gonna be our pile of old parts. So as this video progresses, this will get hopefully a lot bigger and then we will roll it out for the metal scrappers. All right, so I'm gonna pop these springs out and a lot of times with cars like this with a solid rear axle, you can take the shocks loose, then essentially manhandle the springs out. And we'll take off our airline, there we go. All right, Grand Nationals always have kind of a lowered stance from the factory, so I am curious to see if these are lowering springs. That looks like a very 80s little tag there, though. It is possible the springs are just worn out and they're sagging, that, that, that could happen too. I don't know why I'm doing this, like I could tell anything at all <laughs> by physically trying to compress the spring. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and take these lines out. I don't think I'm gonna go back together with the airbags. We'll save them, they're, they're still probably good, um, but we can take all this stuff out of the GN and they really, they just have this fished through the frame rails like so. And we're, I mean, we're gonna get a ton of good vacuum tubing here. They use the factory clips, not bad. Go right back together, bam. And usually guys with airbags pride themselves on where they put the little valves because you fill them up just like a tire. So there's a valve somewhere in there. We gotta go find it. Okay, cool. Now, if I was a super cool Grand National guy from the 90s modifying my car, I would totally have the valves behind the license plate. That's right, let's see. So I do have custom plates on order for the Grand National. Oh, that's slick. Wow, I kind of feel bad now. Yeah, I filled this car up a bunch of times and never even noticed this. Oh yeah, they, dr they drilled this out. Got that guy out of there too. All right guys, in hindsight, I should have just left those and cut the lines or just left the lines as well. Because <laughs> these are the rubber stoppers. So 
if we don't put anything here, these little screws will make marks like that. That was already there from before. It was probably just barely touching it. So anyway, a little, little foam for now and we'll have to find, I'm um, assuming some kind of rubber plug to put in there. GN guys, let me know what, what goes right there. Oh, and check it out. I still do have the airbags on the TA. Here are my little trick valves through the license plates. Sleeper status, you don't even know. All right, here we go. Yeah, that works. All right, guys, as you can imagine, a lot of the play that's going on in this steering system is because of joints like this. They're pretty much all like this. Look at how old this stuff is. It has just developed a layer of crusty goodness. I don't, I don't even know. All right, so we're gonna replace a ton in the front end. And this kind of old school car has cotter pins. We're getting to the point now where there is a whole generation of mechanics out there that have never had to deal with cotter pins at all. Like they've probably never even seen these before. All right, rusty cotter pin number two coming out. Sometimes you just, just gotta break them. There we go. All right, we're replacing all this, so we don't really care too much about it. My crusty old outer tie rod sleeve, inner tie rod. This is probably the same one for any G body. And it's like, this little guy was lucky enough to get on the Grand National. You don't deserve the scrap pile, but you're getting the scrap pile. We definitely need to wash this car though. I had to drive it here and it was snowing. So of course this salt and we did wash it, but look at this. I mean, you really gotta be careful in the Midwest. We're gonna have to blast everything. <laughs> There we go. To the pile it goes. All right, here we go. One arm, one hit. Don't hit the intercooler shroud thing. One of these days. Our pile is getting bigger. All right, so the idler and the pitman on this car are in good shape. They have no play whatsoever and they have Moog parts. So these are probably replaced not too many miles ago. And we'll definitely clean it up, but you can see here, there's no play at all. So this would be a waste of money to replace these. The center link is fine. This guy was replaced also, no play whatsoever. So we don't have to do any of that. Next up, we're gonna be replacing the sway bar end links and the bushings. As you can see, they are cracked and very old and this will cause poor handling as well. So let's get new ones in there. Okay, this is probably about 5,000 degrees now. All right, so we can kind of pry this bolt down like that. There we go. Yeah, needs a freshening, that's for sure. And there are lots of pieces to these. Kind of got to basically build them when you get new ones. Luckily, these are the same for like millions of cars. I've dealt with these similar style sway bar end links on a bunch of old GM stuff. So anyway, I'll show you how they go back together when we get the new ones. Bring it to the water. Oh yeah, sizzling. She's a scorcher. Oh, this one's just gonna come out gently. No persuasion needed. Are these header bolts? Dude, these are totally header bolts they used. Like let's use some awesome 12 point header bolts to hold in the sway bar. That's so cool. I wonder if this is the stock size or if someone put a larger one on. This is a pretty decent sway bar. This thing's thick. Yeah, these bushings have seen way better days, but hold on, what are these made of? Are those poly? These might've been polyurethane bushings they installed back in like 1992. All right, this is, we're gonna reuse this. So it's going near the pile, just not back in the pile. Now right, we're attacking these front shocks next and they have two nuts on the top. So we have to break free the lock nut. Okay, that was pretty easy. And I gotta say, sometimes it really stinks working on older cars, especially from the Midwest because of the rust and the age, but this just has the age. It has no rust. This thing is from uh, Colorado. And aside from meaningless surface rust like this, it's, it's really nice. All right, so we have to counter hold the top of the shock and then we can break free this nut here. All right, comes to a point where you can't keep the little wrench on the top, so you just gotta hold it by the threads, which is fine when we're replacing the shock anyway. All right, so these are the easy ones right on bottom. And then bloop, see decodes, nothing I can decipher. Yeah, they seem to still be in good shape. We're just gonna get way better ones on. Doesn't this just look like an old font? 
Like this is from the 80s or 90s or, yeah. Hey, KYB, I got a great idea for you. Gas adjust. It's gonna be the new craze on all the, the Grand Nationals, and it was. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take off the brake calipers because we're gonna be removing the entire spindle since we're removing both of the control arms. If one's gonna get stuck, it's always the bottom. Oh yeah, we're good. Thank you, state of Colorado, for not using rock salt. This will give me a good opportunity to clean up all these pins and hardware. Whoa, okay. Yeah. And these pads got a decent amount of life in them. The rotors are brand new on this car. I must say the brakes work fine, but uh, yeah, at some point in the future, we might have to upgrade these. I at least put disc in the rear. Um, the thing is with 15 inch wheels, we're very limited on what we can do with brakes. So, all right guys, next up, we have to remove the coil springs. So we have a coil spring tool like so. All right, so before we use this tool, we're gonna apply a little bit of grease here to the washers and this is just some high temp grease and we're going to get some on the threads too just to make this easier on them because we are going to use an impact which is something you're not supposed to do but i like to get my projects done and uh, not spend forever turning bolts so we're going to cheat all right so we hook these guys on here and then this tool fits here all right so from here we're just going to tighten this long bolt it's going to pull down those hooks and pull the spring down and compress it all right, with the spin jack in place, we can remove the lower control arm bolts. And right, we can use the gun once it's broken loose. There we go. Look at these threads. This is gonna clean right up. Beautiful. Just a wee bit of persuasion. All right, uh, look at this guys. This nut is totally loose. I just want to remove the cotter pin. Okay, glad we're doing all this, that's for sure. Yeah, I've always kind of wondered, I'm like, you still gotta tighten the nut down and like, it'll be fine. What do you need the cotter pin for? This, this, is, this is what you need it for. Get out of here, cotter pin. You've done your job. Thank you. We're gonna replace you with someone much younger and prettier. I don't wanna go. Save me. There you go, little buddy. We have a huge pool of water here because we started pressure washing some stuff yesterday night. Uh, and then after we get these arms off, we're gonna, we're gonna go to town too, because while you're in there, can I take this off with my fingers? Oh, wow, yeah, look. I mean, we were getting a clunk from this side. Definitely could have been a loose ball joint. Wow. It's not like the joint itself is necessarily loose. It's just, it wasn't fastened. You can see here, we have no spring pressure. The spring is basically attached now to the lower control arm with our tool. Uh, so you never want to try and remove any of this without compressing the spring. Otherwise it'll shoot out at you and it could be, I mean, it can literally kill you. Okay. Let's swing this out of here. There we go. Okay, and how are these bushings? Yeah, they're pretty, pretty cracked up. All right, next up, we're gonna remove the spindle. And look, <laughs> look at this kind of stuff, guys. You see this? This is welding rod. And we see this throughout basically the entire Grand National frame. And from what I understand, this is just normal on these old cars. They just kind of, did they weld by hand or something? I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I mean, from what we can tell, it's never been in a wreck like at all. I mean, it's got a clean Carfax. Not that that means anything on such an old car, but just looking over everything, it's got old stickers from like the '80s and stuff. Um, but yeah, this is just all over the place. Like here, we're all the way at the back now, and you can see that again. Same one on the other side of the frame, right there. This is hilarious. We blasted this with the pressure washer. Look at this. This is all original. All of this. For some reason, I'm happy with the bad welds. It's just kind of cool. Like it's vintage. I don't know. It was funny when we rebuilt my wrecked silver Tesla, it had similar welds on it. And that's a newer car. So not saying too much about Tesla right there. Okay. Woo. That is heavy. For having such a tiny rotor, this is a very, very heavy spindle. But this is going into the wash rack for a cleaning the rotor has absolutely no ridge. It's like brand new. So we don't need to replace that. And there was no play in the bearings. I think they had just done the brakes probably a few thousand miles ago and like 15 years ago. So we're good there. We'll just give it a good cleaning. Wow. Look at how bad these bushings are. Yep. 
we definitely were getting a lot of noise from here. That could have been part of it. Oh, this joint is just all kind of bound up. Okay. There we go. Oh, I'm so glad we're replacing this stuff. All right, let's bring it to the pile. Yeah, this pile is it's getting pretty big. We still have the other side to do as well, but the car is getting lighter. Our pile is getting bigger. That means progress. Not that this really will do anything to a spring flying at you, but it makes me feel better. Springs are dangerous. All right, so we have to remove the spring compressor tool. Just be mindful of what you're doing. Don't ever look at the spring head on. Just stay away, stay far, far away. There we go. All right, cool. Spring is off and I'm just so curious if this is an original spring. You know, like I said, the car the car does look kind of lowered, but I don't know. What are these tags? 14080051. What does that say? DY. Oh, here we go. DYT. All right, we just got done disassembling the driver's side as well. Lots and lots of gunk here to be cleaned up on the frame. That is for sure. But with that side taken apart, here is everything. Here is our pile of really, really old parts. And we did find out that these springs are original. So those are 36 year old springs with 142,000 miles. And that could be part of the reason why this car is just so floaty. Uh, so everything here is very, very worn out. Well, except for the rotors and spindles, we are gonna save those. We just need to clean them up. But here's all the old stuff. And here's all of our new stuff set up on a table, just like the last Grand National video where we had a table full of performance parts. And uh, yeah, I, you know, kid candy store. I mean, it just, the reference isn't more true than right now. I mean, look at this. So we have aluminum replica Grand National wheels. So these are much lighter than the factory steel wheels and the finish is a million times better. So on the original wheels, the black will wear out and it's very difficult to mask this all off and paint it. So these are brand spanking new wheels. We have brand new Mickey Thompson's all the way around. Uh, these are eight inch in the front and I went with 10 inch wheels in the rear. So they do have a massive deep dish. I am not sure at the moment if I like this or not because from every angle, you can't really see what the wheels look like. Um, but we have massive 275 Mickey Thompson drag radials in the rear. So I don't know, we'll get these on the car and kind of see what's going on. So the wheels are from CurbinPerformance.com. They've been around for like 40 years selling Turbo Buick Grand National parts. It's pretty crazy. And I got a bunch of other stuff from them, including this little guy here, the Kerbin's Guide to the 86 and 87 Turbo Regals. Hang on, I gotta flip through a couple pages for you guys. This is basically a plethora of information on these cars, but I think I figured out exactly what I'm gonna read my kids every night before they go to bed. This is insane. All the information you'd ever wanna know is in this book. So very excited about that. And I won't go over every single part right now. We'll do it as we install them, but we have a GNX suspension brace. We're doing Bilsteins, we're doing brand new springs. We're, we're doing it all, so anyway. Uh, with that, let's go clean up the frame and then we'll start installing this stuff. This Grand National is going to feel brand new when we're done. We already did this spot there. This is gonna be good. It's so thick. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. 36 years of gunk. Goodbye. Thank you for protecting my frame. Wow, look at that. Oh man. All right guys, this is definitely one of those things that you can get super carried away. And uh, yeah, we are completely ruining like the whole shop. Look at this. I mean, dust and dirt and dirt is getting literally everywhere. This isn't, eh, this isn't worth it. <laughs> so I, I did a really quick blast on the passenger side. You can see the frame was painted black. And so we got most of the dirt and everything off of here. But I think this side had a power steering leak for a long time and it kind of just took away the paint in this area. So I made sure to clean up the areas that are gonna be difficult to pressure wash once we have everything assembled. Um, but this does look like a job for outside. Even once we get everything back together, we can just take the wheels off, put it on jack stands, get the gas pressure washer and just go nuts everywhere. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend more time cleaning my shop than cleaning the frame if I continue to do it inside. So this is good enough. We'll dry everything up right now um, and we're assembling. Oh wait, no, we still have one more part to take off, which we'll do right now. It's this, look at that. 
ton of noise coming from the steering. This is super loose. This boot is destroyed. We got to fix that. All right, first things first, we have to remove this plastic cover. Just kind of slides back. And yeah, this rubber joint in here is probably super worn out. All right, we're gonna break this nut loose here. Oh, this is definitely an original part, I'm gonna say. There we go, now she's nice and loose. I love these tiny little Sonic ratchets. All the ratchets are super fine tooth. I love these tools. Okay, hopefully we can find that. Oh no, I'm gonna drop it on there now. Wait, hold on. I'm coming for you, little buddy. Bloop. We didn't wait to dry anything. I just, I can't wait. We're just gonna work. I, I hate stopping in the middle of a project for really anything other than that. I, I have to pee really bad. I'm not doing it. I'll hold this pee all day. Then we have an 11 mil on the other side. Why are all steering shaft bolts 11 mils or something weird? I, I don't understand that at all. This is the kind of stuff that keeps me up at night. All right, that bolts out. Look at that. Look at that 80s blue Loctite. It's like in style. That's 80s blue right there. All right, now we should be able to slide this guy off. It's coming off slowly but surely. Come on now. All right, there we go. Came right off, easy. Now I just gotta pull it off the top. Almost, let's do this. Yes, whoo. Now this here has gotta be the original. Just see what I'm doing. This is definitely the way to do it though. Okay, so there goes that. All right, we're getting there. It's getting getting kind of loose. All right, let's get the seal completely out of the way. Okay, come on, baby. Get out of there. Get out! Oh yeah, here we go. There we go. Let me get this out of the way. Okay. All right, so what we need to do now is just grease up this bearing. It's already pre-greased, but we're just gonna add a little bit more with our purple ice cream spoon and call it a day. All right, then we need to tap this into our new white collar. All right, so that's that. So from the factory, there is no roller bearing. It's just these rubber seals, that's it. So this is a big upgrade uh, for stability. We'll probably notice a lot less flop in the steering wheel, you know, kind of like up and down. Everything's just gonna be tighter now that we have this bearing. All right, so now we're gonna slide on our new piece with our sweet new bearing. There we go. And this is gonna lock into these tabs here and center it. All right, so this only goes in one way, so we're slotted in properly there. All right, so next up we have this metal retaining cap and I've already preloaded our new clip on there. And I believe this only goes on one way as well. All right, so we have this retainer nice and flush. Everything is super tight. Look at this before it was just wobbling around like crazy. And we have these lined up. So we got that, bam, bam. Look at that, upgraded. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install this new lower shaft. So we have this shaft installed all the way at the end and this is telescoping, so you can see it comes out a little bit. And I've extended this exactly where it needs to be. So now we can make a little mark where we need to grind so that the bolt can pass through. All right, so we have the steering shaft out of the way and we're just gonna use a little Dremel bit now. All right, here's what it looks like after we ground it down a bit. And now we just slide this guy back on. Hopefully for the last time. And we'll throw a little bit of Loctite on the bolt. And hopefully this goes through. Yay! We did it. All right. Perfect. This is awesome. We installed the upgraded bearing, the upgraded Jeep shaft. I mean, maybe the Grand National is going to handle like a Ferrari, you know, like a 1950s Ferrari with a gearbox. I don't know if that's even a thing. All right, bolts are in on both ends and we are done here. All right, we're going to continue going back together now. This should go smoothly. Knock on differential cover. Um, but yeah, we got rear springs. I'm hoping I can just muscle these in like we did with the other ones. And so what we're installing here are just factory GM springs. Oh, so close. Oh, come on, baby. Oh yeah. Bam. Ugh. So I really like the factory ride height of the Buick Grand National. We actually will be probably lifting it slightly because the old coil springs are really worn out. Check this out. Look at how much these things have sagged and lowered over the years. That is not good. That is definitely part of the floaty ride that we're getting from this car, so cool. Yeah, the rears aren't that bad. Yeah, a little bit. But either way, they still have all of these original GM stickers. We ran the numbers and these are, well, you can't see these numbers, but on the fronts, they were original. All right, let's get the other side in as well. Oh man, this one's harder. Yes, because that one's pushing down now. It's doing one of these. That means like a little bit of, I need a stretch for the power stance. Ugh. 
This is gonna hurt, by the way. I think I'm, something bad is gonna happen. Because you kinda gotta like, you gotta bounce it, you know? If you pulled that down, that would help. Okay, that helped big time. Oh wait, oh, now it's stuck. Ah! Yeah! Ugh. <laughs> wow, these look pretty. Nice. All right, we're gonna remove this exhaust hanger. It's just kind of getting in the way. There we go. Yeah, this is not being used at all. And I think it's gonna make the shock install easier. All right, so we're replacing those gasomatic shocks or whatever they were called with some nice Bilsteins. Oh yeah, look at that. Cool. All right, so we gotta remove these lower mounts. So there's a nut on the inside. And how did that not just... That needs a hammer. One hit wonder for sure on this one. Bam! One hit wonder out of the park. That's right. All right, we got some new hardware for that lower mount. All right, so we're just gonna put this side in like that. Ow. I just hit my head on this point right here. What, what is the purpose of that? I should grind that down. That's dangerous. All right, anyway. No more complaining. Let's get some hardware on. All right, so we need to push up this rear end housing so that these line up because they're at full extension right now. Yep, there we go. All right, we'll tighten up the bottom one. All right, with the Bilsteins bolted in, I bought a tubular rear shock brace that we're gonna bolt in the top, and this is gonna add some rigidity. This isn't gonna add any creaking or anything negative at all. It's just gonna kinda give us a more solid feel to the car. All right, so we just gotta slide this in on top of the frame. This thing is a very tight fit, I must say. But we're almost there. All right, we got the bolts through, lock washers and nuts on top. Rid of our spin jack, and we are done. We are done in the rear. Look at that. Bilstein's new springs. We got the upper shock brace in there. Looking good. Let's move on to the front. I'm using the trough of water on the floor to clean parts with one of my old t-shirts. That's, that's where we're at right now. I have to go to one of my kids' plays in like two hours, and I Really want to get this done. All right, we're going back together with a brand new upper control arm, new ball joint, new bushings. We transferred over the bump stop. This looks much prettier than the old one. There we go. Okay, yeah, now that these bushings aren't totally shot, these are actually kind of hard to do. You can't just flip this whole thing up unless we loosen these, which we can do. All right, so these shims right now, we're kind of just guessing. The alignment shop will add or remove these, but they were evenly spaced before and the shims just go in right there. And then we'll just screw on our nut. All right, we're just gonna loosen this up a little so we can access the bolts. All right, there we go. Now we can get to the bolts a lot easier. All right, so now we just need to bring this down and we were right there. Now, once the car is lowered, we'll tighten these fully because you want to tighten control arm bushings when all the weight of the car is on. Otherwise, you're gonna twist the bushing every time you lower the car. You need to put it in a natural state. All right, let's snug it up. Okay, all right, upper control arm is on. All right, I cleaned up the spindle a little bit and we'll get our new nut on. All right, we'll install our cotter pin now. All right, cotter pin's in. All right, we have a brand new lower control arm as well, new bushings, new ball joint. Uh, this was like $111 or something like that. We could have done the ball joint and the bushing separately for, uh, I think it would have been about $70. So for a little bit more, we got a nice new arm that's freshly powder coated. I'll, I'll take it. You gotta line up the castle nut with the hole in the ball joint. Almost. Okay, I went a little past, but that should work. All right, and we got our cotter pin. I'm just, I want this to look pretty for no one to ever see it. Okay, all right. Front coil spring time. And we're gonna slide this into the frame first. There's a rubber mount up there as well. That's lined up pretty nicely. All right, so now we're gonna stick the tool back in through the bottom of the lower control arm. Put one on there, one on. Okay. All right, we'll get our tool here on the bottom like so. All right, 
once it's compressed a little, we can start lining it up. So as we compress the spring, I'm also pushing up on the bottom of the control arm. So we're keeping these lined up. Just make it easier. All right, so we're getting a little bit of anti-seize here on the shoulder of the bolts. Ooh, where are you? Almost there. Bam. Wow, so satisfying. All right, so we got those bolts in. I'll get this guy out of the way. We'll also loosen and tighten these up on the alignment rack, or at least tell the alignment technician to do that once it's at the proper right height. All right, now at this point, we can remove our spring compressor tool. And then we'll trade this guy in for a Bilstein shock. All right, here's our new Bilstein front shock. We already put our little cup here and our rubber isolator. So we'll send that through. So we'll use our little screw jack to compress our shock and make life easier. Good enough. Let me get this guy out of the way now. This one should be much easier now. And here on top we have a rubber isolator. And then we have our top hat and then a pretty top hat. So this is literally just for decoration. It's very thin. And then we just have one lock nut for this. With the bill seams, you have to hold the shock with an Allen and then you can tighten up the lock nut. And obviously this is much easier because we have brand new parts. All right, that's good. All right, we're gonna go back together with our new brake pads. So the inner one clicks in like that and the outer will go like so. All right, new brakes going on. And I cleaned up the pins so we can grease these up as well. I say with none of the steering stuff attached, we have so much room. Next up, we're doing the tie rods and we got a new center sleeve as well. So what we'll do is we'll transfer this guy over here and we're gonna try and match the old one as best as possible so we get the alignment kind of right for the alignment tech. All right, and then this side is reverse thread. All right, so we matched this up pretty close. The alignment guy should be almost there. And so let's get this side in. So we moved this a little over so it's easier to get this guy in. All right. There's that. All right, let's get this guy in here now while we have room. We'll get this guy in too. Get in. All right, guys, off camera, we put this side together, same as the other side. So now we can attach our outer tie rod. All right, we can now grease everything. And you don't need too much. You don't want this stuff coming out of the boot, but these were completely empty. There we go. You can see it starting to inflate a little. All right, next up are the sway bar bushings in the front. So we have to pry these caps off like so. And then these will have a slit in them so they can be replaced easily. So these look like the polyurethane bushings for better handling. We're going with a normal stock replacement made in the USA, and it actually seems to be much stronger than this old one. I could have gone polyurethane on everything on this car, but I'm never gonna break any handling records with my Grand National, so I'd rather just have it be, you know, kind of quiet and not creaky in that department, uh, and just handle well, like a stock car. All right, so we're just gonna snap this guy on like that, put our cap back on, we'll repeat on the other side. This is hilarious, so I cleaned up the bolts that hold the sway bar in, and I thought these were 12 point, or some of them were 12 point. Nope, they were just so gunked up, and I used a 12 point socket on them that we made them look like a 12 point. <laughs> All right, sway bar is going back home. There we go. And we'll start one on this side as well. I'm not gonna tighten those up all the way just yet. Let's get the links in. All right, here are the new sway bars. These look so good. A uh, little complicated sort of on how they go back together, but I'll show you guys really quick. You gotta hold it all in your hands, ready to go. And then we're gonna slide this long bolt in here. Okay, and then you got your bushing and your metal cap. We'll slide that, slide that on up. We have the long sleeve. 
Slide that. Metal cap, another bushing. Now we gotta move this sway bar up a little. That's why you don't tighten it all the way. Okay, feed that down. And then you have the rubber here on the control arm. And then another rubber bushing, another cap. All right, and then before we tighten up the bottom, we're gonna slide this other side in too. Rubber bushing, got our sleeve, and another bushing. All right, cool. Now we're actually gonna drop the sway bar back down. With the sway bar back down, you're just gonna see a few threads at the beginning. You kinda gotta smush the bushings a little bit. There we go, that's that side. And then we can get the nut on this side. All right, now we can go back together with the sway bar, so don't tighten anything until all the bolts are started. Getting a good smush out of that bush, and this is gonna be so tight. This was the other sway bar bushing. Look at how bad and floppy this was. This definitely needed to be done. All right, now we can tighten up the links. That's pretty much all you need. You don't have to smush these bushings too much. Once the car settles, the bushings will level out perfectly. So we'll just do the same on the other side. All right, next up, we're cutting some zip ties off. We are going to replace this bar here, which is aftermarket. All right, there we go. So this is a front brace that someone installed, a fine piece, I must add. Nothing wrong with this whatsoever, but I ordered a brace kit for the front bottom that includes tubular pieces. There's multiple pieces, and I just want them all to match because no one will ever be able to see them from underneath the car, but that's what we're doing. So here's one of the other cross pieces. So we're gonna install that there and then throw our lock washer back on. All right, and then we'll put one on this side. All right, then we have a couple bolts going into the frame. We just made our own threads. That's what the instruction says to do. A lot easier than I thought. Okay, now we actually found some new hardware in the box for this. We're tapping out four holes so we can properly fasten this air dam where it should go, not zip tie it like that. It should be right there. All right, we need to get some black washers, a little mix and match here. But anyway, we are, uh, we're done with the suspension underneath the car. Yeah, we got everything going on here. We got our braces in the front, we got the brace in the back and we have a bunch more braces left on the table that we need to brace up once we lower the car. It's gonna be the most braced car in the world, but looking good. Very satisfying to get all those old crusty parts out of here. I know we still need to clean up the frame and paint it and all that kind of good stuff, but we will. Right now, it's function over form at the moment underneath the Grand National. So anyway, let's lower it and continue on. All right, so next up, I was gonna install a GNX style X brace in the trunk. That's four of these guys. And I don't think I'm gonna do this anymore. I read that the GNX actually has it welded in and these would bolt in and they attach to here, kind of run them in an X like that and like this, and then on the other side. And I gotta drill a bunch of holes into the car to do this. And that's not even how the GNX had it. So I don't know, let me know in the comments section if these bolt in ones are worth it. Um, I think if anything, I would just do exactly what they did on the GNX and then maybe we'll do that when I eventually take the body off and restore the frame and stuff. But I don't know, a little more research is needed on this one, especially before I start drilling holes. And same thing in the front. We have these two little bars and these require you to drill a hole in the fender and then it lines up like this. <sighs> They're going from the fender to the core support. I don't, I don't know what really this is doing, honestly, especially because I'd have to drill into my nice fender. So. Let me know, GN guys, is, is this and the trunk one worth it? I don't know. All right, something that is worthwhile in this corner is getting a battery hole down in. I got a nice factory reproduction piece and I'm gonna get rid of the little handle here in the most violent kind of unnecessary way possible. It's kind of just an eyesore. I don't like it. All right, banish this to the pool of water. And then we just put this there. This there, got some hardware for it. 
Sweet. That's good. I don't really like this sticker either. And we don't need to know that this battery is now almost four years old. Brand new battery. That looks much cleaner. And look at our turbo cover, still looking pretty. Our satin black intake tubes. It's getting to be a good looking engine. All right guys, as a little bonus before we bolt the wheels on and go for a drive, we're gonna straight pipe it. And here is the reason why. This has very, very old and rusted out mufflers. This one has a hole in it and who knows what the insides look like. They could be all clogged up and destroyed. Uh, so we measured it out. It's the exact same length as pipes you can get at the auto parts store. So we're just gonna swap these out. See what she sounds like. Who in the world installed these clamps like this? This one's kind of loose. Like why, why? Okay, I loosened these from the top too. All right, well, that's good. We got all the clamps loose. This has been on forever, so this will be fun. We don't care about these mufflers. Get them out. We don't need you. Wow, this thing is super heavy too. And it's a straight through design. Okay. All right, probably not gonna sound much different. <laughs> That's great, perfect. All right. All right, we're going back together. These stickers are a pain in the butt. Like you, you basically just gotta burn them off. All right, we'll install our makeshift rear hanger. All right, here we go. Our straight pipes are complete fingerprints and all. I uh, don't know if this will sound any better, but before we find out, we gotta, we gotta bolt these on. All right, guys, moment of truth here on these rear wheels. I am torn whether I'm gonna like these or not because of the massive deep dish. I usually like deep dish wheels and deep dish pizza, but in this case, I really wanna see the Grand National wheel. Like I just really like this right here. So I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. And then these are really fat. I mean, the car's not that fast. Like these tires could go like sevens in the quarter mile. The solution for having too much tire for the amount of power is to just add more power. So we can fix that, that's not a problem. All right, we're gonna be really careful because you need kind of a thin wall socket with these. I wanna scratch up the black. Work these once we get on the ground. And now we have caps that just snap in. It's beautiful. Look at that. All right, the floor might look disgusting, but this car is looking very pretty. Oh, wow, that is a lot of tire in the rear. I, oh man, if I stick with this, I have to make this like at least a 10 second car. You can't roll on a 275 ET street, unless you're minimum 10 seconds. I don't even know if the car could physically spin these. Wow, yeah, those springs were worn out like crazy. I don't necessarily like this though. Guys, this has no exhaust. I mean, it has a catalytic converter, but no mufflers, no resonator, nothing. And I mean, once it idles down, it'll still be pretty quiet. So anyway, uh, let's drive it. Oh, this is nice. Uh, we still need an alignment. We we eyeballed it for the toe, so it doesn't really pull. Like it drives straight, uh, but the steering wheel obviously needs to be adjusted and then they'll add and remove shims and whatnot, but we can still drive it like this for now. I kind of want the springs and everything to settle so the ride height is where it's pretty much gonna be. <laughs> it's still got that awesome. turbo power. But yeah, it's not loud at all. It does sound a little throatier though. Even with these fat drag radials, this thing takes the turn so much better now. Oh, this is so nice. Oh, and there's like, dude, there's no play like at all in the steering wheel. I know it's hard for you guys to experience this guys, but aside from the wheel being off, I mean, we really eyeballed the alignment pretty good. I mean, it it drives straight as an arrow. This will be a e very easy alignment for whoever gets it. I think what I might do is get another pair of the eight inch wheels. They only go seven, eight or 10. I, a nine would be nice, but it doesn't exist. Um, I think I might do another set of eights with some non-drag radial street tires, like a 255 or 65. Uh, and then these will just be the ones for the track. I think that'd be a good combo. And then these rear wheels and tires are basically gonna force me to do more modifications to the car. I don't know where we're at right now. I mean, it's probably just like a eh, solidly in the 12s, like a mid 12 second car, something like that. All right, after driving around for just a few minutes, here's what we have in the rear. So the springs have settled down. This is the perfect ride height. And let's see, I was worried 
and as you start to move away from the car you can't see the design of the wheels but that center cap definitely helps it does this looks really good i do think i'm going to polish these uh so they look chrome i like the chrome look a lot better but these can be polished so during the detail video we're going to polish out the car and we're going to spend like 40 hours paint correcting everything putting the badge where it needs to be we're missing the 3.8 turbo for the hood uh and we're going to really just mint this thing out we might do a light tint on the windows as well but yeah in the front i think we could go lower so in the detail video i might start that one off with getting lowering springs just for the front but this is just kind of how they look like because they're 15 inch little wheels you know but uh yeah a little low in the front should be good all right guys so lots of decisions to be made here do i get the eights in the rear for the street i think we do but then i gotta look at the ride height so if i'm gonna do anything i should get those wheels first and that's pretty much how i would be driving the car most of the time then these would just be for the track or having fun on the street or whatever so yeah i think i gotta make that decision it'll all be in the next video though when we do probably like a 50 hour detail and just mint this thing out and then the car will will be done and yeah so i think i'm gonna hold off on the alignment until i get uh the lowering springs possibly all the way around i don't know but anyway here is the grand national with a rebuilt steering and suspension running perfectly and now driving perfectly and looking very very intimidating And made a big mess. Oh, I don't know. I could, for some, for some reason, I'm kind of. When we rebuilt my 2015 Tesla, they had the similar. It was funny though when we rebuilt my Tesla. It was funny when we rebuilt my wrecked silver Tesla. Oh, we do have a new one. Oh, it's in the water. Okay. But in the words of my friend Robert Schneider, you can do it. I don't think I can do this. Maybe the Grand National is gonna hand. I mean, I don't know if you believe me, but. I reckon I'm right. Fix and reckon, boy. Ah! And we'll also, we'll also tighten. We'll also, we'll also loosen and tighten these up. All right, so with the rear, all right, with the rear Bilstein, with the bottom of the rear Bilstein. All right, here we go, our straight. All right, here we go, our fingerprint. Yeah. All right, here we go, our.